Good day, everyone. It's Kevin Offsey of Action Coach DFW, Action Coach Texas. Uh, today, we got Robert Atkins uh, with us. Uh, Robert's the CEO of Balanced Media Technology. Robert's going to share with us uh, some of his lessons learned, best practices, what's allowed him to become the entrepreneur he is, and the bills, the business he's built. Robert, thank you for sharing with the business community. Give us a little runway on yourself and your business. Yeah, thanks for thanks for having me. Um, I'm really happy to be able to share uh, some of my journey. And and if there's people interested, they can always reach out to me to learn more. Um, my my background is 30 years in interactive entertainment. I was very fortunate to be part of the cohort that sort of started first person shooters here in Dallas. Um, video games, games like Duke Nukem 3D, Doom, Quake, uh, Counter Strike. Uh, you know, just got to work on a lot of really great technologies and the creative space. I was creative director, marketing director, um, business owner, uh, and I owned a company called Ritual Entertainment. We were we were essentially like an art house for gaming. And so we attracted a lot of amazing talent. We were there very early in the process and uh, we got to make a lot of really cool stuff. At one point we were working on you know, Star Trek and Lord of the Rings simultaneously, like talk about really big intellectual properties that everyone knows and loves. Um, and so I really spent 20 years uh, making games, enjoying the process of making games as the creative director. So the best of all positions, you get to sit around with concept artists and a team of 20 plus artists, all just jamming on, jamming on, uh, on cool products. And about 10 years ago, Right around the time of the the crash, the economy kind of took a tank. Um, I, I realized, you know, I'm kind of done with this. I don't want to just make games anymore. I want to, you know, and I, I didn't really I thought maybe I'll go teach, you know. And so I was involved with uh, the starting, the formation of SMU Guildhall, which was the number one game design school in the world, uh, graduate program. And um, I'm actually teaching ethics there now, uh, right now. They invited me back this semester. But I realized through that process of teaching the next generation of developer, the next generation of content creators, that I didn't need to leave an industry that I helped create to make a difference. I needed to figure out how to empower it. Nice. So I I had this, this burning question now, like uh, 20 years into my career is like, okay, what can I do that turns the engagement that we have uh, into something of purpose? And just to give you some context, when I started making games in 92, 93, 100 million people worldwide playing video games. Now there are 3.4 billion. We spend, you know, I think 1.3 trillion hours playing games or, or watching games be played. And that's massive amounts of engagement. The question was, is how can we turn that engagement into something that is quantifiably measurable that makes an impact on humanity in a way that isn't just about keeping them engaged or selling them product. And so I didn't have the answer. I just went on that journey and I went out and I started going to conferences, reading books, uh, like studying people who were doing things in, in, in the space of gamification, uh, crowdsourcing and things. And that's around the time that I met my partner, Carl Laparus, who had this idea about going in the body and creating a game where people could fight disease and whatnot. I was like, that's incredible. I want to work on that. And then I was like, well, we still have to measure it. We didn't know how to measure it. Then that's when we met our partner, Corey Clark, who Dr. Corey Clark, who's at SMU now, Deputy Director of Research there. Um, he started working on this concept for a platform to where you could connect data science, AI training, into gameplay loops so that while people were playing a video game, they were now training an AI to do things like cancer research, uh, training an AI to look through medical imagery to be able to now uh, uh, segment and label an image faster than a normal AI could that couldn't do it, that human had to, humans had to still do this process. And we were able to patent that process. We were able to commercialize it. We were able to, and so what we started doing was we built this platform called Human, where we ingest, you know, data, and it and it's agnostic to problem type directly into a gameplay loop, and to be able to start to train AI that can be used in the industries that could help expedite discovery, expedite uh, the subject matter experts' uh, productivity. Uh, accuracy and so on and so forth. So that was 
that was really how, you know, my career started and where we started balance was in that moment to be able to take this, this incredibly uh, passionate group of gamers and, and give them the tools to start to do something more than just escape reality. Wow. Seriously. Wow. Yeah. That That's oppressive and that's commendable. Right. Yeah, no, and I think that's really, as an entrepreneur, as a as anyone, as humans, right, we want to be able to take our talents and use them for something meaningful, yeah. you know, and, and you know, money is one thing, and, and money comes with these things, it's not the primary, it's not the primary, and that's really what I learned in 2008, 2010, when all the economy kind of went to hell, was it was like, I was, I was, people were coming in, and, and there was a shift with, you know, there was a shift in the enterprise or, or the big business world we're talking about how we're going to refocus our morals and our and our values to be the the way because they were losing they were losing uh, customers right and i so i sit and listen to all these things and and the thing that, I, that my biggest takeaway was if i start another company i want to be able to one make the impact and i want to two build that into the dna of my company where it, it's not just uh it's not just hey let's build a company make a lot of money and then take some of that money we've made and actually put it towards something we care about. Let's build a company from the beginning, every single prototype we're building, every single uh, product that we're developing has a uh, human impact along the journey so that we are, we're, our DNA is about making impact. And guess what? Money still, money still comes. It's not the goal, it's, it's the byproduct and and if you know so i think that that was one of the things that i learned when you know you we all can take away from what happened and and that time period where economies go down even now um there's 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 inflation there's all these things you have to sometimes take a reset or reevaluate how you look at your approach to business and decide that i am going to shed this practice because it doesn't it doesn't give me doesn't give me satisfaction or it's not really aligned to my values and or I'm going to attach these things in the way that I start to look at my work. And so you can you what happens when you do that is you start to attract other people have that same mindset. And you get and you get people around the mission and people who want to be part of that and people who believe in what you're doing. It changes it and everyone everyone's goal becomes let's make an impact not not and you don't have to have every single thing defined under that and that's and that can also be a problem sometimes but it's good to know that everyone's aligned to the mission of what we build has impact in humanity wow 100 percent. yes 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 well what we see from the employment side more and more of the younger folks are looking for a purpose-based business not just a business to go get a job yeah You'll make a difference in the world through the business that they're part of. So, yeah. yeah, and if you can connect to that mindset early enough in your career, and that's really why I was when I was going back to SMU, I started going through that process of changing my mentality of how I was going to approach my career from that point, from the twenty-year point. And I was teaching them, or I was trying to get through to them. I don't know if I was teaching them anything, but I was trying to get through to them, like identify your goal like what is the thing you want to what's the impact it, and 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 uh that you want to make on the industry that you're about to go into what is your story what is your legacy don't wait till the end of your career to think about your legacy your impact think about it from the very beginning so that you can map that career out i wish i would have done that from the beginning i i i just went through a lot of pain and suffering to get to get to that that point in my career where I, where I was like about to leave, I was about done, you know, and uh, there's, there's I uh, I don't think that's uncommon necessarily. I, I, I do believe when you hit that 20 year mark, probably a lot of people probably have that kind of like what's next thought, you know? Um, so you've covered this uh, for a bit, or I'd just like to go just open the question. What do you attribute your company's growth to? Yeah. So um, we're, we're right at two dozen people, um, today we want to, I would, that's my number one pain point is I want to double that. I mean, I keep talking about that, uh, raising capital, you know, we, we raise a lot of private capital to do this because it was a very big idea 
that was very abstract to a lot of people, but yeah. we had some incredible part, uh, incredible partners. I mentioned Carl, uh, Chris, Michael. There's a lot of, there's a really incredible group of leaders who came on board uh, to be able to help us uh, raise capital, be able to help us connect to right business opportunities. And the leadership team has really been um, critical for the success. Um, and and so uh, we our, our company really changed uh, over the last two years. I would say the we started working in medical because it was problem agnostic. We were doing a lot of things, trying to do stuff with children's, making medical AI discoveries, uh, realizing at our size, it was going to be super hard for us to get things through FDA approval. There was going to be a lot of like, just we would need so much more capital to be able to do those things. It was going to be a really big, uh, it was going to be a really big climb. Not that we've given up on any of that. It's just what we did was we said that we looked at it, it as like, we have this incredible platform called Human. Let's, if our if our DNA is to make impact in humanity, that, that impact in areas that affect all of humanity, obviously healthcare where we started was a big piece of that what else could we be working on that maybe doesn't have so many uh, entry points that we have to pass through uh, like healthcare. Um, and so we, a lot of our founders are from South Louisiana. Uh, if you know anything about South Louisiana, uh, it's, 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 it's really ground zero for climate change in our country. Uh, the impact of loss of shoreline. There's this great university called Nichols State University down there that had just announced they were building a coastal center to study environmental impact. And so we were like, we, we went to them and we said, listen, we would love to bring our technology to your researchers, to the area uh, in the coastal center uh, and to be able to then take that technology, not just help you with your research, but actually start to uh, drive partnerships. So what we do is we take our technology into a hub, like a university, like Nichols, and we start to connect the technology not only to their data, not only to their uh, to their uh, use cases, to create tools and AI and help them with their problem solving. We want to help generate uh, partnerships with the region. So other industries that they already have partnerships with, uh, government government uh, agencies like parishes that they have partnerships with. And we are able to essentially bring our technology to connect all of these opportunities up in a way that's beneficial to a region. And so regional impact is how we look at our business as well. So we 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 went to a place that doesn't have a lot of technology. You wouldn't think South Louisiana is a technology hub. We're going to make it one. Uh, you know, just like the North Carolina has the uh, innovation triangle around medical. Yeah. We're building an innovation triangle in South Louisiana, and we're connecting it to to universities like LSU, uh, University of New Orleans, Tulane, uh, and we're bringing a AI and technology platform to help uh, those universities who are normally underfunded, uh, not necessarily connected to the the most state of the art, or not building a state of the art technologies from the ground up. And we're that we're that provider. So we're going to once again, just like an idea, we're going to ground zero of of an area that's being affected by something that's super impactful, like climate change. And literally three days after we had our first meeting on the university's campus, Ida came through and ripped through our nation. Uh, so it literally is uh, ground zero. And that's where we want to be. We want to we want to bring tools and technology to the place that to the subject matter experts, to the people that that need it the most, so that they can make the impact fast, they can make business decisions faster, and they can hopefully get to resolutions to uh, help their region and keep their culture alive. That's meaningful. Again, I'll use the word commendable as well. Well done, Robert. So as you think about your journey uh, with your own business, if you had to start over from square one, what would you do differently? What do you want to share with other owners about your journey that you would say, you know what, I would do this differently. It might save you some headache and heartache. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's a great question, man. Um, I probably do lots of stuff differently. <laughs> <laughs> like I said earlier, I'm, I feel like I'm always learning on the job. It's just going to take longer than you might expect. I, I, mm -hmm. I often tease people, I, I tease our team, like it's going, we're going to be a 10 year overnight success. Um, but I think d diligence is absolutely critical. Uh, you have to have a belief mentality that it's it's already happened. 
then you're just working through the process of it. Uh, I think the other thing that I would I would probably say is we should we should take more time to celebrate each other and and uh, the the little stuff because this is a journey. Uh, often we get caught up in how we just went through a, like a pandemic, right? I mean, there's so many things that have happened through this the last few years that we we can't lose sight of why we're doing this. And I wish I would have probably my only regret is I didn't because we went totally virtual. I wish we would have spent more time physically together over the last few years because that I miss that our team misses that, but it's, it's also, it's just the nature of the world we're in now. Yeah. Thank you for sharing those. It's appreciate it. Uh, you've got uh, 24 people looking to get to your business appointment. We've got about 48. What have you learned this far in terms of being an employer? What are the key learnings from being an employer? Yeah, and I, I felt in some ways I feel like I've always been a, a because I can't became a, I was a developer first uh, and I was an employee first before I ever became an employer. I've always been employee minded, uh, so I've always tried to take care of people uh, and being kind and understanding. Um, and um, and I want to remain no matter how big we get. I always want to make sure people. To me, it's people, product, uh, you know, those two things, you can't put one over the other and, and our customer, you know, and and the customers. Um, I definitely believe that, you know, we have to give people uh, the room to grow. Um, and and that's one of, because we, you know, we, and we have to trust our team. Uh, we have We have great leadership. I do not micromanage people. I trust the leadership of those teams to deliver. Uh, one, they they know the goals and they they're given a lot of uh, freedom to be able to come up with the solutions that are driving our product. Uh, and I do believe that's critical. Uh, and so uh, I've I've had to learn myself to not be in the trenches. I came from the trenches and worked hand in hand uh, with development and. That's been the hardest thing for me is not to be in the trenches, to actually be, you know, at, at the the head of the ship, um, and that's been a challenge because uh, I that that's a challenge for me just emotionally, not necessarily a challenge outside of that because I like being there, making the product uh, more. It's more fun. <laughs> now that's uh, yes, great chefs. If they when they build a restaurant, they, if they're in the kitchen too much. Uh, I think I have a problem with the running of the restaurant, the actual operation. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great analogy. Food tastes good, but the rest of the business is not running well. And customer experience yeah. is only part of what it could be. So um, as a business owner, many times you find that there's, uh, you got, you know, the businesses, requirements, demands, and personal life. How do you balance those two? Uh, it's gotten easier since I work from home. Um <laughs> But uh, my wife is also, uh, for me, yeah, I'm very fortunate. And my my wife is an entrepreneur. She's uh, started and ran multiple businesses on her own. She's she's a teacher. She's she's very uh, much um, a Renaissance uh, person. And so for me, I, I've had the I've had the fortune of being able to have uh, a counterpart that is completely understandable. Uh, and so. I don't, and I've always been a little bit of a workaholic um, and my kids are older. So I'm in this window now where I feel like I can, I can get some things done. Uh, still, I still have the energy, still have the, still have the drive to get things accomplished. I think that's the thing about my career too, is, you know, hit that, I hit that 30 year mark uh, recently. And that's really where it's like, okay, now's the time just to really take everything that I've learned every in the in the uh, focus, the time I have uh, to focus and really put it to good use. So I don't really have much of a work life balance. Uh, and I and my best advice, we do take we do take time to breaks uh, for each other. But uh, that is uh, that's the thing I learned a long time ago about vacation uh, when and I and I make this a really hard rule is. When people ask for time off, it's their time. There's nothing, there is no, there is no excuse to reach out to people uh, on, while they're on vacation unless they've given you permission for a specific reason. And that's their time to decompress. Uh, and I, because I early on in my career, I was like, I couldn't disconnect. I would just be on vacation, but I'd be, I'd be thinking about work the whole time and not, not uh, resting myself. Now I've learned to turn off everything. And when I go on vacation, 
I do my best. It's a little harder now that I'm CEO, but to be able to really focus on being present in the moment with my family, uh, and that's really important because you, your brain needs rest. Hmm. Our soul needs a bit of uh, refueling and just, yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, nature does that for me. I love, we go to Colorado quite a bit, um, and we, 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 uh, you know, we just get out of nature. That's sort of our kind of escape. I can understand. I grew up in the country. And for me, it's always great to get out there, just terra firma, just be out there amongst, the, amongst it. Oh, yeah. The there's, there's nothing better than sitting around a campfire. Uh, <laughs> that's just one of the best things are, are casting yeah. a line, casting a line. or those are, those are things you just, yeah, you'll never regret that time. Amen to that. That's for certain. And yeah. if you're staying up and, and, wake up in the morning and get the coal stirring and get the fire back going with the coal. Oh yeah. Stirring. Oh yeah, man. Uh, those that's... are, those are the things. I agree. I agree. So circling back to the employees, Robert, as you look at uh, selecting team members, what are the qualities that you seek in a team member and how do you create a productive and, you know, enjoyable environment for your team? Yeah. Hiring is one of the hardest things, right? Um, finding the right people. Um, we've, we've both, we've hired both at very experienced people and then also giving a lot of people their first jobs. Um, we, we love that part. We love giving people their first opportunities. That's some of the best, uh, re most rewarding, I guess, hires because you really feel like, Hey, this is, you want to create this environment. These young, young, energetic people can grow in. Um, and, and you want to pair them with, people who have experience. So if you can, if you're fortunate enough to be able to hire at both, both levels um, and then pair them. And then the key is for the more seasoned people to be able to mentor and, and allow growth to take place. Uh, and I really do believe that that's the one thing that I, that I've, I've always stressed in my career is we don't pigeonhole people into a specific type of role. We allow them the voice to decide things that they're passionate about, the things that they feel like they can accomplish really well. But we really do stress their growth, letting people, making sure they're constantly growing, giving them new challenges, not not locking them into a singular uh, a singular lane. The other thing that we did as a company that was incredibly important to the leadership of our company was we wanted to have an employee-owned company. So we were young. We people could go make a lot more money out there in the market than, than say a new company who has you know constraints. And so we we took a huge chunk of our company and put it into a pool for ownership for everyone. So everyone's an owner. Uh, and so uh, you know once you hit your one year mark, you're you're vesting, you vested already some of your ownership. And that I think that changes mentality as well. Like if you feel like you have ownership and everyone does, then you're going to have a different mentality of how you come to work. Definitely. There's ownership at different levels and having the true ownership equity in the business, that's a very strong motivator for many. It yeah. really is uh, fabulous. Last question. What are some of the common misconceptions around uh, running a business? How do you address them? Some yeah. common misconceptions. Yeah, that's a, I think things, there's a lot of misconceptions. One, it's not, it's not all fun and games. That's for sure. Um, it's hard work. Uh, and it's just no matter what role you're in, uh, especially CEO. And this is the first time I've ever wore the CEO cap and I didn't want it. My board voted me in this role. Um, you know, there's, there's just a lot of like, I don't know, man, there's just so much to that question. Um, people, People only see when you post something online, people see like, you know, people tell me, oh, you guys are killing it. You're winning this AI award. You're winning this award. You're winning this over here. You're going to speak at, you know, TED Talk, all this. They're seeing all that stuff that you're that, you know, you have to post because it's it's important. It's a cool and it's like it's memorable and you want to like share the word. Right. right. What they don't see is they don't see the three months of just grindy like how you know all these other things that are, that are happening to get to that cool moment 
And so you, uh, I think that's the, from an ex external perspective, that's the, that's the thing that is, is missed is like, man, it's, it's just hard work to get to a, any moment. It's hard work to get to an award. It's hard work to get to an investment. It's hard work to get to uh, a, a customer signing on. Um, and, and it's, it's just continually happening. I think that, I think when people, but I, when people see the great stuff that's being posted, there's just a thousand steps to get to that moment. Um, and there's probably, uh, a, you know, 500 missteps, you know, that, that got you there. So it's like, to me, it's like anyone who knows, anyone who owns a small business absolutely understands that, uh, and, and appreciates that. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Robert. So much, so much truth. What you said there, it's like tacking this way, that way. It's, it's not a straight line typically. So yeah. no, not at all. No. Any last words, last bits of wisdom you want to share today? Yeah, no, I, 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 uh, my wife, my wife, I, when I first started talking publicly about my journey and things, um, I would ask my wife is like, I don't know if there's anything I would say that actually has any value because it's just been a, it's just been a wacky journey. I mean, you don't, you know, you just, you know, I don't know what people could learn, but then I realized, you know, people just need to know, like, you're not alone in this. Amen. This is absolutely a process. Uh, and there's so much to it that we're all kind of, you know, there's no one playbook. There's certainly best practices. And I think I'm very grateful that you're trying to get them out there. Uh, but there is absolutely uh, no one way to do it. The one, the one thing that is clear is the more you connect with others who have gone through the, the transformation or gone through the journey, maybe there's things you can learn, whether or not, like, even though your business is different, even though your journey, your history is different, um, the industry you're in is different. Um, there's definitely uh, small business people need to really have more uh, connection with each other to be able to share and, and lift each other up. Um, because that is without networking and without connectivity to other business owners and, and business professionals, especially ones even trying to come up that, that are that are not in the same place. Um, it's critical that we lift each other up because this is how our nation runs. Uh, we, you know, we're the small entrepreneur, the small business owner is absolutely the engine of this country. Uh, and we often are getting left behind, especially when all you hear about is the large tech companies and the large groups that are out there that are sucking all the air out of the room. Uh, there's a bunch of us for every big one, there's thousand little guys all, all needing each other. And I really wish that we had a more, uh, a community of tighter, uh, connectivity so that we could, uh, stand on each other uh, and lift each other up, uh, because there's plenty of money out there. It's not a money problem. It's a, it's a, it's a, you know, working together and, and looking at, you know, changing a perspective. Uh, and I really do believe that's uh, that's important. So if there's any message out there, I guess that's one I'd love to get out there. Robert, thank you. And that is uh, being the head of the business, the guy or gal at the top, very lonely place at times. And that's one of the things we do. We build community um, because it's that's needed. And when, like you mentioned earlier, uh, they find out it's not just their their companies having the problems. It's classic. And they're not flawed. It's the way it is. Now let's work together to lift one another up. So it's very powerful when that occurs, Robert. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. And if anyone ever wants to follow us, uh, bmt.world uh, is our is our um, our website, bmt.world. Yeah. That was my last question. You beat me to it. So thank you. <laughs> Any other contact information? If they want to follow you, check you out, you've got your website anything else that they should be following yeah there uh the news site is uh yeah and if and if you're uh i i don't know how to share i have a qr code i could probably throw it up and, and show it to you if you want i think it's somewhere um i can send it to you you can add it to the video if Perfect. you want um yeah, we can. we'll put it into the notes section of it then yeah, because we are onboarding uh, people who are interested in learning about AI, AI agents uh, in our platform. We have we have a sign up so people can uh, can, people can yeah. So, Robert's blessing to have met you. Thank you for pouring into the business community, and uh, look forward to uh, working with you here in the McKinney area. Yeah, same here. Thank you.